also, if you just join us, you can refer back to previous, uh, the previous uh, parts, parts one and two. Uh, it's posted on our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com slash ng. Also on Instagram, uh, at Brushwood Radio or Brushwood Rad. Also, the video is on our YouTube page as well. The videos are on our YouTube page. It's www.youtube.com slash Radio ng. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, great to be with you once more on Investors Education Series. We've been running a series in the last three days centering on the benefits of investing in capital market instruments. It's a universal topic. Wherever you may be, Nigerian, United States, Europe, wherever you are, the benefits are the same. Maybe with slight modifications, but they are generally the same. So it's not all about Nigeria. It's about the universal market, which is the stock market in question. We have been trying to take them one by one. We, we are done yesterday with shares, the one you call equity, the one you call ordinaries, the same name. But today we are taking a slight modification from what you know as shares. They are also shares but they have prefix on their name, preference shares. So they are not just ordinary shares, they are not equity. They are called preference shares. And as the name suggests, they are also called preference or preferred stock. Preferred stock or preference shares, they carry the same name. Now, the market has many instruments and that's part of what we intend to educate you on. When you, whenever you hear stock exchange, what comes into your mind is shares, but we have so many instruments. The one we are talking today is known to be a hybrid instrument. It's a borderline stock between equity and debt. So it has a combination of the characteristics of both. And if you are one that wants to be on the borderline, the preference shares, here we go. It's a pity it's not always available, but whenever it's available, having now known about it, I think you should go for it. So what are the benefits of investing in, in, in preference shares? Number one, I have mentioned already, it is a hybrid stock. It's a combination of the good and the good that are found in debt instruments and now in equity. Now what is really the good that is found in debt instruments? If you remember in our series, we have tried to take certain debt instruments we made it clear to you that the major advantage of debt instrument is that it's a debt that must be paid. The debtor does not want to hear, I didn't make money this year. No, it's not said. So every debtor expects to get interest. Even if you are not making money, you must factor in his interest. The worst case scenario, it's cumulative. So that if you didn't pay this year, you must pay it next year. That is why it's said to be a cumulative obligation. Now, preference shares like we said, is a hybrid stock that is a combination of the two goods of the two stocks, debt and equity. So it has benefits that cuts across the two. Number two benefit is the fact that it has fixed return on investment. Fixed return on investment. That's why you see something like 6% per annum preference shares, 6% preference shares, 7% preference shares, 13% preference shares. It's an instrument that is a debt that must be paid. It also has a rate, it's fixed. Now, you may need to know the difference between shares and preference shares, taking into consideration the issue of fixed. In shares, in equity, in ordinary shares as we know them, there is no fixed amount of return. They take the residue whenever the residue is there. When it's a negative, that's when it's a loss. They walk away. There's no obligation to a shareholder if you didn't make profit in a given year. But it's not the same with a preference shareholder. So long that interest is fixed, it's fixed. Ordinary shareholder takes the residue, takes the bottom pot in a Nigerian language. Whatever that remains is his own. And if the going is good, they take the chunk or they eat a lot when the going is good. But when the going is not good, they must have to go and they don't have a say, you know. People are not educated. That's why they make choices they make. 
a, a, a client once said to me, what is the benefit of, of investing in a share? And uh, they, last year they didn't pay, and I hear they are not paying again this year. Well, that is the, your lot. If you are a shareholder, that is ordinary. That is to say you are part owner. You don't have a right to say, pay me whether you made money or not. But preference shareholders have, and it's also fixed. It's fixed as a rate. So that's a benefit for those of you that don't want to hear that they are not going to pay, pay, pay dividend. That is where to go to. Again, it is redeemable. Preference shares are redeemable or convertible. Which other characteristics, whichever characteristics you are looking for, every preference share could be redeemable or convertible or even both. When it's redeemable, it means that there is a period that you are going to hold it. And the issuers will redeem it by paying you off. Because they have paid you interest over the years, they'll pay you the principal, the amount you use in buying it. So your benefit is the interest that you have earned over the period. That's why it's said to be redeemable. It's convertible when there is such clause inserted in the, in the documents of issue. And the clause says, this is convertible at the discretion of the issuer. It means that maybe after three, four years, instead of paying you off, they convert it to shares. You become a pure shareholder, not a preference shareholder. So these are words that are attached to preference shares. Redeemable, convertible. Either way or both, you are on the right path. So that's about the third or the fourth I've given you. Now the fourth benefit is that their claims are settled before that of the shareholders. Whatever claim they have, they are settled. It's driven and is drawn from that very clause that shareholders are part owners. They take the residue, they take the bottom part. So every other person must be settled. In the event of liquidation, assuming a company is going into liquidation, when debt holders are paid, and then uh, staffs that have accumulated salary areas are paid. The next people you must pay are preference shareholders. When after paying everybody, then the shareholders could be considered if there's anything left. That is the difference. So sometimes if certain companies have, um, particularly companies that have very high net asset value, if you begin to liquidate and sell off their assets, they may settle all the obligations and something big is left for the ordinary shareholders. But in the absence of that, the ordinary shareholder must go. That is the doctrine of limited liability. Limited liability means that your liability is limited to the investments that you have made in the company. If the company folds up, nobody will knock on your door and say, uh, they are owing money, so because you are part owner, you must come and bring in more money. That's why it's called, said to be a limited liability company. That's the meaning. The only time that limited liability, limited liability clause does not work is if you are running the company and it's discovered that you were part of the problem of the company while it's going into liquidation. Then there's something that is called lifting the veil of incorporation to look into the veil and say, oh, these are the people behind this company. But that is only for the operational people, not for you and me, who bought into a company and are expecting dividend. So, limited liability clause comes in there. Their, their, their liabilities are settled before the, that of the shareholders. That's a benefit, uh, before ordinary shareholders. Okay, I have explained that it could be convertible. I, I explained that there is a guarantee return. I also said it's a hybrid instrument. These are things you will need to know concerning preference shares and what makes them different from ordinary shares that we have discussed before. Interestingly, that's also the advantage and that is why we recommend them for you when you see them in the market. Like I said earlier, they are not readily available, they are not always available. But when you see them, if you're looking for a hybrid instrument, that's where to go. Thanks for listening. One will take yet another instrument in the capital market when next we come your way. Thank All you. Right. All right, thank you very much, sir, for that very informative session. Uh, also, if you just joined, you can watch this video on our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com slash radio ng. Also, this video will be uploaded on our YouTube page. Like, comment, share uh, with your friends and your family. Tell them uh, about Prostitute Radio. However, that wraps up the Investor Education Series. Do join us as we continue.
new